Hey friends, I'm Jason O'Dell from luminescentphoto.com, Jason O'Dell Photography. And today I'm excited to be able to test the new um, Nikon Nikkor Z MC 50mm 2.8 macro lens. So this is a, a native 50mm macro lens in Nikon Z mount. Okay, so I'll take a look at that today. We'll look at some test shots. We'll talk about pros and cons of using this lens and circumstances in which you might want to consider this lens. So um, this lens just came out a couple of months ago. Um, it's kind of hard to find. So again, thank you to my friends over at B&H Photo who were able to get me a test copy to review. And so without any further ado, let's go to this lens. So here, here it is. It's a little itty bitty 50. Okay. Um, it is um, very small, very light. It weighs about 260 grams. And it comes with front and rear caps. Um, very small 46 millimeter filter thread and then this tiny little what we would consider to be almost like a filter ring but it's considered to be the the um, uh, lens hood itself and this just screws in right to the the front of of this lens and from here you can attach uh, filters and, and other attachments if you need to so again 46 millimeter filter ring on the barrel of the lens we have our normal AM autofocus or manual switch here and then uh, because this is a macro lens Nikon has included a focus limiter switch so you can use it in the full focus range or from 0.3 all the way down to 0.16 meters um, in the uh, focusing range so if you're doing a lot of close-up work um, you would want to potentially flip this so that the lens doesn't rack out all the time back and forth Okay, so a few basic specs. Um, it's an f2.8 lens. Uh, you can stop it down to f22. Um, it's designed for Nikon FX, so it's a full frame lens. If you put this on a Z50 or a, the new ZFC, it's going to behave more like a 75 millimeter focal length because of the DX uh, crop factor. Um, this will go down to one to one, which is an important uh, consideration if you're looking for a macro lens. It means it will it's able to focus all the way down to life-size uh, magnification. Um, it's got 10 elements in seven groups. That's the design. Nine diaphragm blades. Um, it does not have VR, so no stabilization. And that's going to be something to consider um, with certain bodies. Um, but the nice thing about it, it's very small. It's very light. It, it's um, only 260 grams. And... Uh, this, this is a, a nice lightweight lens and it's built quite well for a lens that seems like it might be really light. It actually feels good in the hands and it, and it handles quite nicely. Now, um, I tested this lens um, and we'll look at some test shots in a little bit. Um, so, um, but you know, the important thing is, is where might you consider to use this lens? Um, on the one hand, uh, you, you know, it's a, it's a 50 millimeter lens. You can use it for any sort of general purpose photography where you like that 50 millimeter focal length. Um, but it goes down to one to one. Now its minimum focusing distance is, um, is a six inches or so. It's, um, oh, I forget what it says here. I have the spec 6.3 inches or 16 centimeters. But don't let that fool you. Um, when you set this lens up, uh, it's gonna be a lot closer because as we're going to see the front barrel extends and so that six inch minimum focusing distance or that 6.3 inches is actually the distance from the subject to the sensor plane inside your camera it's not the distance from the front of the lens so the working distance with this lens is incredibly short it's about two or three inches long and i'll show you what i mean i've got my nikon z7 ii here and we'll just mount this lens on onto it And I'm going to put it into um, manual focus mode. And what you can see is that at one to one, this barrel extends way out. Okay. So that means your subject is going to be right about there. And that can be very tricky. So why would you use this lens um, for, for macro functions? Well, uh, very simple. These are the traditional, the 50 millimeter macro is your traditional copy stand lens. So if you're doing reproduction on a copy stand where you've got, you know, documents or something, it's very well corrected, it's sharp in the corners. It's great for reproducing documents in that way. You're not going to shoot necessarily at one to one. Of course, if you've got very 
uh, small objects in a studio setting, nothing is moving, nothing living like bugs or whatever, um, then you can get down to one-to-one -one with this lens. You're just going to have to make sure you've got proper illumination because, again, that working distance is, is very short. So let's take a quick look over at some of my images that I got with this lens and see how well it performs. All right, so let's take a look at some images I captured with the um, MC 50mm f2.8 micro or macro Z Nikkor. Um, first of all, let me just show you my test subject for one-to-one -one shooting. Th this, was, um, this is how close you have to be in order to shoot at one-to-one. -one. So with the camera set up, you'll notice here that um, you, you don't have a lot of working distance. That six and a third inches of working distance is between the sensor plane, which is right about here, and the subject. So the distance to the lens, the working distance, is much, much shorter. So I did some test shots to look at this, um, this lens um, at one-to-one, -one. and so we can, we can take a look at that and see what we got here. So let me pull these up. Okay, so here is this image. This is the first one we've got, and this is one-to-one. -one. Now you'll notice if you look at my EXIF data over here at the top left, we're at f5.6. I thought this was an f2.8 lens. Well, again, the normal design of macro lenses is that when they go to one-to-one, -one, they lose some light. So we are operating effectively at f5.6 with this lens when we're at one-to-one. -one. If we zoom in here to 100%, we can see that there's a lot of um, uh, great detail. This is very, very sharp. It's very good. Um, it falls off a little bit as we get to the edge of the frame, and that's kind of noticeable. And some of that might just be I didn't have the subject completely uh, perpendicular, but you get a little softer. So what we can do is we can uh, go through these, and we can see what happens as we stop down. So this was wide open. Here's f8, and if at, at f8, still sharp in the center, the edge sharpness is starting to get better, and you know, this is what you would expect as we stop down. We're getting a little bit extra depth of field and usually we get a little bit, or, bit better edge acuity. And um, here's F11, much, much sharper right here on the, on the edges. And if you go beyond that, you'll start to see softening from diffraction, that's normal. So if you shoot this lens in, in the macro capacity, anything between say F8 and F11, you're gonna get excellent, excellent results. Okay, let's take a look now at some of this distortion and vignetting. Um, not, not terrible at all with this lens. In fact, it's very, very good. So I have this image, a raw file in Lightroom. And if I turn off the profile corrections here, you can see that um, there's a little bit of distortion correction happening. And we can also take a look at the vignetting. So we zoom into 100%. I am not seeing any significant chromatic aberration, even with this profile, um, with the feature turned off. And if we go into the corner here, we can look for vignetting. So here is the image with vignetting uh, removal um, enabled. And if I slide this and turn it off, you can see the corner gets a little bit darker. But this is not significant vignetting at all. This is very, very good performance. So excellent job here on the optical design uh, for correcting this lens. Now, how does this lens compare as a macro lens against the 105, um, uh, the new one? Well, that's a great question. So we can go in and take a look at that and go into our compare mode here. So on the left, I've got the 50-2.8. We're wide open at 5.6. And on the right, I've got the new 105 VRS um, wide open. And it's f4.5, so it doesn't stop down quite as far. So let's zoom in on these and see what we get. Um, you know, again, both of these lenses are, are excellent, but as you can see, the 105 has a slight edge here in sharpness. This is just ridiculously good sharpness if we, if we look at this over here. And if we, if we go back out and we zoom into those edges, you can see clearly that the 105 uh, macro is just outstanding on the edges, even wide open. It only gets better when we go to F8. All right, so what I have here now is we're going to look at the 50 millimeter stop down to f11 where it's performing at its best against the 105 wide open, and we'll look at those corners. And you can see that it's pretty comparable at this point. 
a little difference in exposure, but that's just because of the lighting situation. But both of these lenses um, are, are great. So if you use the, the 50 millimeter 105, you stop it down to f11 for your macro work. If you're doing serious stuff, you're going to get great results. Um, it's just that the 105 is, is, is great, and that'll be the subject of a future review on my website. Now, what about other kinds of things? What about um, you know just the kind of shooting that you might do with this lens? So the 50 millimeter is really great um, for handheld close-ups, especially if you're on a Z6 or Z7 body that has IBIS, the in-body camera uh, image stabilization. So here's some photos that I, that I grabbed. Um, these are just handheld shots. Um, you can you can get close-ups here um, close up of some you can see the fine detail in this air plant um, household objects if you're in tight spaces this little 50 millimeter lens can work great for for getting fine details and close up on things and then this next shot is just to show you how the bokeh looks so here's the bokeh it's um, it's pretty good um, it's not a cream machine by any by any stretch, but it's but it's nice. And remember that this lens is going to be effectively stopped down, so um, or losing light. So here um, I was shooting at uh, f 3.8. So even though I was wide open, it, it still because I was relatively close to the subject, um, I just wanted to see how the out of focus highlights would work. You might choose to use this lens for portraits. Um, so I just you know what's the the bokeh look like for portraits. Um, so here's uh, Grogu, and uh, this is at uh, f3. So f3 and f4, where you get this this look. And so you get a decent. It's sharp. It's um, not a lot of light fall off. You know, you don't get significant vignetting. Certainly nothing you can't control. Um, but uh, you know, again, you're not getting that creamy background. Let me show you a comparison with the 51.8s on the left the 50 millimeter 28 at f4 not an unreasonable um, aperture um, but and again you're going to be kind of forced to use this aperture here's the 51.8s at f4 they look pretty pretty similar the difference though is that with the 50 i can open this up to f1.8 um, or f3 and really blur the background so you can see here the difference in rendering between these two shots so if you're really into portrait work with a 50 millimeter focal length again the 50 uh, 1.8 s um, does give better out of focus backgrounds and then just for fun here is a shot that i got of my parrot out in the backyard this was using the new Nikon ZFC so this is on DX and you can see again excellent sharpness and the out-of-focus background isn't too bad this again was captured at f4 so these are all conditions in which you might consider these 50 millimeter lenses so let's um, get our thoughts together and come to some conclusions So as you can see, the MC Nikkor 50 millimeter macro lens is pretty sharp. It's a, it's a nice little lens. Um, but also one of the things we'll notice is that you only get f2.8 when you're focused at about three meters or farther, about 10 feet away. As, as soon as you get inside of 10 feet, that aperture value starts uh, increasing or the, the aperture starts decreasing. And so you're losing a little bit of light. And in fact, when you focus all the way down to one to one, the lens behaves as though it's f5.6 so you are losing light and that's a normal thing with macro lenses it's part of their design so where you know if i were just talking about this lens by itself it's a very good lens it's well made um it's it's put together nicely it's very sharp um and it and it's and it's nice it's not big and heavy but of course we can't talk about this lens without some alternatives one is and i'll talk about it in another video the 105 macro which is just a stellar lens and it gives you a lot more working distance so that's one thing but i want to focus on this other 50 because here is the 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 50 millimeter 18 s lens and it's a it's a very well made large manual focus ring doesn't have the macro capability but this lens comes in at a hundred dollars less than the macro 
okay so what is the difference here well this lens weighs about twice as much so it's it's going to be more like um Oh, I forget what it is, uh, 400 plus grams, where remember this one was only 260. So we're talking about almost twice the weight here. Um, but this is a stellar lens. This 50 uh, 1.8S is an, it's an amazingly good lens, especially if you're using um, Nikon uh, FX, where you can get the, the, the benefits of the, of the corners. Um, it too does not have stabilization, um, but it, you know, it, it uses sort of more standard 62 millimeter filters. It actually focuses fairly close. Um, it can focus down to a little, a little over a foot, again, from the, from the sensor plane. So it's not that this isn't, uh, that you can't get relatively close to subjects with this lens. And in fact, if you add something like an extension tube to this lens, you can actually get down to close to one to one. So, you know, it's, it's kind of tough for me to say because in the absence of the price difference, this is a very good lens. This, this macro lens is, is awesome. And if you need one-to-one -one and, you, and you can't afford you know, the 105, which is an excellent lens but costs significantly more, um, it's a good choice. But for about $30, you can get an extension tube on this lens and you can sometimes find uh, this lens either used or refurbished for under $500. So, I mean, when you consider that the... the um, this guy is 646. This one lists for 596. So it's, it's um, about $50 less. Uh, I, I think I said 100, but really $50. But you can actually get these refurbished uh, for under $500. So I would say for most people, if you want a 50 millimeter lens, your better bet is to get the S lens. Okay. Unless you're really hard up about the size and the weight, or you really need the macro capability. Now, what about on a DX body? So I recently got a Nikon ZFC and I used this little lens. I will say that this little macro lens balances very nicely on the small Nikon ZFC. And I would imagine it would be very similar um, with the uh, Nikon Z50, okay? There's one small drawback that you would just have to be worried, uh, aware of, not concerned with, but just aware of, that neither of these 50 millimeter lenses have built-in vibration reduction. And the Nikon Z50 and ZFC, neither of those have IBIS, in-body image stabilization, whereas with the Z6s, Z7s, and the Mark IIs of those, um, you get the IBIS system. So on a full-frame Nikon mirrorless, this is a stabilized lens, but on the DX1, it's not. So you would have to keep your shutter speeds a little higher. However, um, you know, this is a very, very good lens. And again, in the absence of the other options, I would be even a higher rating than, than what I do. So eh, if I had to rate this one, I would give it about, you know, eight stars. Whereas the, you know, that, but that's subjective. So again, I'm Jason O'Dell, luminescentphoto.com. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.